So plan, plan number 12. We tried everything in the world to get us both live, get on Facebook, get through Zoom, go live, and nothing worked. So you guys are just getting me. I'm pre-recording this video. Uh, we will upload it as soon as it's done. We just really wanted to get you guys this, this, uh, this Q&A today that Jackie and I had kind of come up with. And uh, for some of you guys who are just seeing me for the first time, I'm not going to go into a lot of my backstory, but my name is Jessica Alstrom, and I had the pleasure of coming out to this fabulous group in January with my team. Uh, my name is Jessica Alstrom, and I'm, I'm what they call an alchemist. And all that means is that someone who specializes in bringing light to the darkness. And I believe right now, at all times, I have job security, right? It's like my job is, is really to mentor and educate self-realization. Uh, I'm a trauma specialist. I work with a lot of healing of PTSD inner childhood, um, you know, recovery, repair, uh, rebalancing, a lot of biochemistry, a lot of quantum biology, a lot of epigenetics. And basically what that means is I teach and help people navigate inside of themselves to find the root and source of their unhappiness and trauma and pain, clear it out so they can move past that to where the diamonds are. And that's really what the alchemist is, is that turning, you know, turning that um, lead into gold idea. And that's really what we all are here doing is we're, we're doing that inner journey within ourselves to really navigate into a world that doesn't feel like it always supports us, even though we're doing our best to support ourselves and everyone else. Um, the thing I love so much about this group is it's based in positivity and she's had some really amazing teachers. So I know there's a huge level of awareness here. There's a lot, um, there's a lot of knowledge under the belt of this group. So I'm going to speak freely today through a perspective that might be new language for you. Maybe not. I mean, I know you guys have had Joe Dispenza come through and my language is all about understanding things from a higher, higher perspective. Now, the higher perspective you get, the more everything starts to make sense everything okay even what's going on on the planet right now everything and when you get to this higher perspective past the material world past the emotional world past the etherical world and you get into the particle world you get into the idea of that everything is just vibrating potential and that there is no negative energy that exists outside of what we create and think about right we bring about we are electromagnetic beings so when I found out that Jackie's group just turned seven, I was so excited to share with her the, the concept that we use in our, in our academy here is the understanding of the seven year cycle and the inner child. So the idea of the seven year cycle is that, you know, numerology and astrology are great maps for us on this journey through self-realization. And we use astrology to understand our behavior, our genius, our limits, and we use that guiding map to help us really facilitate the biggest opportunities of growth and expansion in who we've chosen to be. And numerology is very similar where we can utilize numerology to understand life path information, cycles, because, you know, time doesn't work in linear form. It works in spirals. So, and we call those spirals of time, right? Because time doesn't technically exist, but it seems to work itself out where everything falls into unique patterns. And the life cycle of a human is always set in seven year cycles. The seven year cycle hopefully is designed for us to start in self-awareness. And at each seven year marker, we navigate into what's called self mastery. Mastery of, you know, tying your shoes, mastery of riding a bike, mastery of a car, mastery of, you know, getting right with your body. You'll notice that if you look back where you were seven years ago, you've kind of come full circle in, a, in, in an idea of your own awareness, right? Big transformations happen in the collective every seven years. We are right now in the fourth year collectively of the seven year cycle. And I pulled up my little, um, my, my little map for you guys so that I could break it down for you so you could have an understanding of where you might be right now and where you started off as. So the first one, obviously it's like a little pyramid and starts at 
year one and seven, right at the top, your first year is all about self-awareness. Self-awareness is when you're identifying with who you are in your environment, right? If you think about a baby and they're at three months and they're kind of looking at their hands, right? Checking out the scenes, checking out what everything's happening. And then by the time they're two, they're getting attitude because they already know who they are, right? And year two is all about self-exploration. Year three is self-discovery. Year four is your year four, excuse me, is self-understanding. Self-love is um, self-love. Year five is self-love. Year six is self-transformation. And year seven is self-mastery. So Jackie wanted me to speak a little bit about, since I do so much um, early childhood uh, conscious parenting and reparenting and um, a lot of inner child kind of trauma that sets the tone for relationship issues, time issues, money issues in your current now. So what we do is we go back and we look at the blueprints because if you were building a house, you'd first need a foundation. Then that foundation, right, is coming from a blueprint. The blueprint builds the foundation. The foundation brings the builders and the materials in and then you build a home. Well, you are that home and you were built out of a blueprint. The foundation was put on top of that. And whatever that foundation was, I can guarantee you, you probably did not choose all of it from a coherent awareness space. It was chosen for you, right? And if the first year starts in self-awareness, this is when we decide and discern who we are in this body, right? So we're listening, we're seeing, we're feeling, we're touching, we're tasting, we're experiencing this first year, and we're deciding. This is important for you guys to realize how you create your reality. You decide based on practice, application, experience, and observation who you become that first year. In a second year, you become to kind of explore that. Now in year two exploration, think about if you've ever had a company or if you've ever raised kids, you can identify with what I'm saying. You now want to explore who you've become based on the identification of that foundation. So that first year is where the foundation is. Believe it or not, that baby is looking at mom and dad and identifying what love is based on their relationship, the relationship with the baby and the mother, the relationship with father and mother, the relationship with father, child, siblings, right? Atmosphere, economics, abundance, lack. These are all things that are taken into this identity foundation of the root of who you became. So you can see why I have a job now, because obviously we've kind of been raised from, you know, a lot of lack and a lot of fear, not because we were not loved necessarily, but that's just how times have been in the past. And we were, we were designed to grow roots from what we believed and experienced and observed, not from what was true. We know that, I mean, I know this as a mother, I have four children and I know that when I was a very young mother at 20 years old, I had unconditional, endless amounts of love, but it didn't mean that I was not terrified. It didn't mean that I had self-love. It didn't mean that I was um, happy, right? Just because you love something doesn't mean that you're happy. It just means you love. So then you take that identification as love is pain and you begin to build a body out of it. And then, you know, you get out of your house and you get through your first seven year cycles when you start school and, and now you're trying to identify at year number one again at that second seven year cycle. Who am I in my environment, in my social situation? This is when children usually bump up against each other's belief systems of what's happening at home. And it can be very, it can be very difficult to first sensitive children to start that, that next seven year cycle. And then you're dealing with all of the expansion of the body turning more into an adult with sex hormones and the body changing, try, trying to re-identify while all things are happening, what's happening at home, what's happening at school, what's happening in our, our, you know, our environment, what's happening in our collective, what's happening on our planet. We're taking all of this in. We're deciding and discerning who we are based in what is happening, not what is true. Keywords not what is true. We are the witness, we are the observer, we're the downloader, we are the perceiver, we are the receiver. 
Now, although we have this gut intuition and consciousness, it tends to get really overridden when influence is so heavy around us. You know, mom has a big personality or mom doesn't have a big personality and we have to fill the gaps, right? You all have a story. And if you were in Southampton in January, you heard my really traumatic story of my first 15 years that was all based in childhood abuse, suffering, lack, blah, blah, blah. But what it has taught me as I have been moving along my seven year cycles is that I am a byproduct of what I believe. And if I want to change what I believe, I have to go inside where the foundation and the blueprint are. I can't, you know, if I want to change my house structure, I cannot paint the wall or put curtains up and have me change. Just like I can't cut my hair and lose another 20 pounds and fix any internal damage. I can't find another relationship that's going to heal me when the pain is coming from inside me. So the seven year cycle is really fascinating. We use it a lot in, um, in our academy to really break down, you know, what those walls are, what those black points are, what those stuck points are, where that pain is buried, where we're numb, where we've given up, where we lack motivation, where we have procrastination, where we, I don't identify where our fear is. Those are all the walls that we're looking for that were literally built from your seven year cycle. Your, those walls that you keep hitting up against in your now moment actually stem from an identity that isn't even you, right? Your body, your biochemistry, which is matter, was built out of the fibers of thought, of action, of behavior, of experience. And therefore, we're acting that out constantly and we're just getting older. And you'll notice that some of the things you dealt with as a child, you're still dealing with on a bigger scale now. You know, if like dad was emotionally available, you'll notice that you're really attracted to emotionally unavailable people and you don't know why, because your body is acclimated to the story that what, and, and what you decide love is. For me, love was always pain, right? So my mom would, you know, literally beat me and then tell me she loved me. So you could see that I ingrained that into my hard hardware that love was pain. So when it was time for me to go choose a spouse or a partner, I was literally physically, sexually, emotionally attracted to love is pain. There could have been the perfect person right there in front of me waving. And I would have been like, Ooh, no, thank you. That's boring. Give me trauma. Give me drama. Right. Because that's what my whole entire system was built out of. And I get this all the time in my office. I get the, the clients like this all the time. Why am I choosing the wrong person? Why does this keep happening in my business? Why am I still sick? Why am I still broke? Because the you that's underneath all that is just divine perfection. So abundance is your birthright, right? Love is the essence of who you are. And all you want to do is give it away and get some in return. It's not like we're asking for that much, but this is how we build our reality from those internal core belief systems that are at that rooted space. So Jackie finishing a first seven year cycle in this group, I'm sure she's had lots of growing pains. I'm sure she, she had to go through awareness into all this discovery points and the mastery point where she is now. And it's an opportunity for us to celebrate that as how far she's come because really after a seven year cycle you really do know what you do not want and you do know what you do want which is imperative right now so i wanted to just touch on that because it's all about celebration if we would look at everything that we have accomplished regardless if it wasn't the way you wanted to accomplish or didn't work out the way you wanted to it you we celebrate. Celebrate is a very magical frequency. It is very childlike. It elevates the spirit immediately. You know, sometimes you just have to celebrate making through the day, making it through the hour, especially in our times that we're sitting in right now. Never, ever, ever has there been ever a global collection or a global connection of we're all in this together more than we are now, which means I don't know how I really said that, but what that really means is never, ever, ever, ever has the whole entire planet been suffering the same way, right? And what does suffering bring? Suffering brings, it, it brings commiseration. It brings people together, right? But thriving also brings people together from the other flip side of duality because there's two sides of duality. We've got our, 
our first half of our life that we've designed out of survival. And hopefully we move and work on our journeys and heal the body and heal the mind and heal the spirit and move into the second course of a reality where love becomes our teacher. Now, I'm going to tell you that maybe some of you would like to disagree with me, but I will. I would love to debate anyone on this, is that we are moving into that second phase of Thrive. But we use negatives, you guys, as shortcuts. We use opportunities to break patterns abruptly, right? We use systems that don't look harmonized and look very dark on the outsides to bring us together, right? Because we need to use the dark in order to get to the light at times, especially when we are kind of stuck in the rat race, all right? So Jackie had another question about, um, about what's going on right now. And obviously I've been doing a lot of teaching on this coronavirus, on what's happening on the planet right now, what the global shift is, the new earth, right? From my side, higher perspective guys, everything is in divine order. I could not be more excited right now about the times that we're in and I hope I have an opportunity to tell you why in this next 20 minutes, okay? Um, Okay. Oh, okay. She wants me to talk a little bit about how, you know, how I, how I got to this place. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I have 600 videos on YouTube. If you guys are curious about me, I also have a page on Facebook called Jessica Ostrom Alchemist. And I do a ton of live broadcasts on there about all kinds of topics, but she wants to, me to talk about the Kundalini awakening that I had. So Obviously, you know, I kind of touched on my childhood, which was very rough, but when I, when I turned 35, I started dealing with um, autoimmune disease and I had fibromyalgia. I had a raging eating disorder. I had migraines. Um, I had chronic back pain. Um, I had four children and I had just married my second husband who ended up being narcissist number two. And I was seven months pregnant with my son and I had a uh, panic attack. And um, the panic attack, for some of you can identify with this, it felt like a heart attack. And I was seven months pregnant. So I was, I was having a panic attack in terror that I was having the panic attack in distress because I was worried about the baby. And I literally fell down into the fetal position on the floor and started to breathe. So a voice, you'll notice this. Spirit is very gentle. Ego is very loud. This gentle voice just started whispering in my ear and said, just breathe, just breathe with me. And this voice, and I, I, I can only assume it was my higher self or, 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 you know, a higher power was telling me to breathe in a, in a certain rhythm. And it was causing a, a lot of oxygen to move from my mind that I was having all the anxiety with into the rest of my system and it began to accelerate. It, it basically took a panic attack and turned into a Kundalini awakening. And I felt like a lightning bolt go all the way through my spine and jolt my root chakra. And as it kind of came back up, um, I began to just feel light all in my body. And I had felt like I had slept for, um, a whole night and interesting when I finally kind of came out of that experience I did have visions um, I talk a, a lot about this in my YouTube channel um, I won't waste your time here today talking about it but when I came back I was different I could see uh, through the veil I could see all 12 dimensions I could see time and space as a spiral spectrum I could see inside the human body I could see and feel and taste things like taste colors, right? Numbers had a different see, a different personality than you would understand. And I could read minds, which was not fun in the beginning, I tell you. And as this began to happen to me, still pregnant, I have been in a state of survival my whole life. So one thing that I knew is that if I told anybody what was happening to me, I would probably get thrown in the loony bin and lose my children. So I decided to keep everything under wraps 
and investigate and practice it and you know live a double life for several several months um i had to give up driving because i couldn't tell what was real and what was not because all i was seeing was codes um i didn't see my son when he was born i saw blood moving through the body i saw the brain underneath the skull i saw all these things and you don't have to believe me because you can't make this stuff up and after that i basically uh once i learned how to use my internal gifts that basically just busted out of me we all have i'm not special as those busted out of me i learned to work with them i learned to turn volumes down and turn volumes up and i knew i knew with all of my heart that my job my mission on the planet was to help people exactly like me traumatized children single mothers people who with disease because i will tell you that within three months of this kundalini awakening i developed um, a childhood trauma formula called time travel where i went in and and basically healed you know 18 years of very abusive childhood trauma that i received from my own family and as i began to heal my body my my autoimmune disappeared headaches disappeared back pain disappeared eating disorder disappeared and i felt what was called happy for the first time and i had no idea why so i knew it was my job if i could feel it i could heal it and i have been ever since 2009 coaching non-stop writing non-stop working non-stop to help facilitate guidance to people who were in my situation because all I really wanted at that moment was someone to come and help me. And how many of you have felt that way? Well, I'm answering your call and I'm gonna give you some really, really good news today because from that higher perspective, I'm able to go all the way to the beginning building of this matrix, this hologram, this virtual reality that we call life and teach you from a very higher perspective and a grounded earth perspective because you'll notice that i spend my time teaching in time relationships health and money i don't necessarily think it's a great idea for us to be searching for the cosmos when our families and our loved ones and our journey is right here now we're going to use the cosmos to make heaven on earth but what we really want to do is we want to master thyself and raise our vibrations so that we are the creators of our own reality, not the default creators. We're not creating through the pain and the suffering of the past. We're creating from the, the now moment, which is always a clean slate, always a clean slate. So the good news that I have to share with you guys is, and I've said this on many interviews this week, lots of interviews, is that from a higher awareness, what is happening right now? And I know a lot of you who are listening could be in fear. Maybe some of you are losing people. Maybe some of you have lost your jobs. Maybe some of you are terrified about your finances and, and I might, my heart goes out to you. But I will tell you that everything negative is a shortcut designed to get into your cracks and crevices and ask you the bigger questions and ask you the bigger questions from the void, from the patience part where we're all having to like let go of all of this entanglement that we have been surrounded with and get back to ourselves this is a necessary i call this a necessary evil in order for us to evolve and decide choose discern and react right so we get right now an excuse okay to slow down matter of fact force slow down we have an excuse to take excellent care of these bodies where before it was like mm, i don't know if that's an option i'm too busy right i've got to chase the future because i'm terrified of the past i've got to live in the future because i'm terrified of the now moment because the now moment feels like the past where all my trauma is right it's almost like you get this beautiful beautiful house that you built from scratch and forgot that you built it over a graveyard and then you're sitting in the most beautiful house in the world and it's haunted this is what the human body feels like when the trauma is not healed within right now we have body trauma planet has collective trauma so on an individual level you are going through your own testing process right now you're being tested who do you choose to be faith or fear right the the future is unwritten it's uncertain but you are creator and you do create your own reality 
And you may not believe that at times because you've created things you didn't want. But remember the graveyard? You're creating from the graveyard in this beautiful home that now you want to move out of and get a new home because you think that the new home won't be haunted. But you always take yourself with you. You are creator. You're creating from all seven chakra systems. And what those are is their energy grids that make up you. Root is your, sexual, is, your, um, is your survival, it's your money, it's your childhood. You've got your creativity and your sensuality. You've got your power center, you've got your heart, you've got your voice and truth, you've got your vision and you've got your knowing. And all of these spaces within you create. So when this is poisoned through you know, not allowing ourselves to be authentic and not being raised in a space where we could be authentic, you know, being praised for being rescuers and being praised for people who are selfless, we lose this connection with ourselves. And what has happened is we have lost global connection with ourselves. And this is an auto reboot. If you've ever gotten an update on your phone, okay, sometimes it goes haywire and it stops and it turns off and it's booting. And you're sitting there like, I need to get my phone, right? This is what the planet is doing right now housed through something that looks very scary and ominous, you know, like it looks for, it looks scary. Oh my gosh, how terrible a virus. But let me tell you how beautiful and perfect spirit is. Okay. Think about it. Viruses scare people. So there's not going to be any looting during this auto reboot. Everyone's going to stay inside six feet away from everybody else. So it's actually quite peaceful, this adjustment. Okay. Fear makes you present, right? Oh, I haven't been taking care of my body. I haven't been doing this good. You see, problem, solution, problem, solution. I have been so entangled in my job and the future and this person and that person that I haven't had time to meditate and I need to get back to myself. Here's another virus situation. Now you have no choice. You see how sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is the most uncomfortable thing to get you on the right path back to yourselves, back to self-realization. And because we're in an extreme fast-tracked ascension process we call evolution, we cannot evolve if we're running in a constant addiction of the future. We actually have to be in a situation where the future is unwritten in order for us to get back to our truth, where our intuition is, so that we can decide who we are, discern who we are, and create. This is the most beautiful thing that could have ever happened to us. You can disagree with me if you've lost people, but I will tell you that all loss is just a transition of energy. It's going to move into some other perspective. If you've lost people to this virus, they want it to be lost because no soul is a victim in this universe. They have chosen to work on the other side of consciousness to now assist you as a guide and no body, no ego, which means no separation. This means they're closer to you now than they ever have been close to you, okay? So grief is something that you have time right now to work through. This is the time where you find your mentor. This is the time where you find your grief coach. This is the time when you dig deep into those roots, into that graveyard underneath your house, and you clear the space so you can enjoy this beautiful mansion that you've created, okay? So we're going through this individually, our own personal virus, right? There's a virus in my system. Even look at the metaphor of that, you guys. There's a virus in your system. Hello, virus in your mind that's keeping you critical of yourself, that's keeping you separate from yourself, that's keeping you small. That's a virus. And then there was a collective virus, right? Materialism, all these things where it's like, if you look this way, be this way, act this way in order to be loved, all BS, it's a virus, interfering with our direct connection to love each other. The unity of, of expansion and connection cannot come back online when everything was done in, in such, you know, attachment and obsession and need. As long as there's need, love can't be pure because need implies lack and lack implies suffering, okay? So this, this that's happening right now is on a higher perspective, a reboot, reset, recalibration of planet Earth. It is waking up its people, places, things, clearing out nature a little bit so the animals can, whoo, gosh, good. It can quiet the noise. 
of the minds of everyone, get back to a zero point energy field and move into a state of choice. Because probably before this, you didn't even realize that you didn't have a choice, the life you were living. Right now, this is giving you the opportunity to look at this higher perspective of, I do have a choice. I might not, it might be scary as all, but I still have a choice, okay? And understanding that what your job is right now is to practice, prepare, and play for who you choose to be on the other side of this when the doors open back up and the restaurants open back up, right? Who do you choose to be? Do you want to take these old patterns with you? You have, you have that capability because you have free will. No one will stand in your way. But what you do is you have a timeout right now. We have a global timeout. We've all been sent to our rooms to think about it, to learn about it, to learn about what. And what do we do when we get in those rooms, right? At first, we're kicking and screaming on the door, let me out, let me out. We hoard, you know, we yell, I'm running away. And then we settle in and we sit on our bed and we begin to look around. And we, I can remember that trophy I won. And oh, I remember that. And then we're pulling out journals and we're reading about ourselves, and then we're drawing, and we're listening to music, and we're thinking about things. And all of a sudden, we start to become ourselves again. And then mom knocks on the door and says, time for dinner. And you go, oh, I really appreciate my room. I really appreciate my space. I really appreciate who I am. You've returned to the center moment, and you have moved back to your center point. Now you can create from that place. We call it the three Ps instead of patience. We practice, prepare, and play for who we want to be. And if any walls pop up, we go back to the graveyard and we pull the grief, we pull the humiliation, we pull the shame, we pull the guilt, we pull the resentment out, clear it out, open up the space even more, open up the body even more, and move into that fluid state of creation again, and then hit the wall, go back, right? And all of a sudden you realize you're not hitting so many walls. So this is a fast, forward shortcut guys and regardless of how you want to look at how we got here how we manifested collectively a virus like this i'm going to tell you we all had something to do with this if we all create our own realities we all have been asking for change we all have been asking for something to show up that would give us more uh, motivation to take care of our bodies we've been asking for something to show up so that we could have time to ourselves We've been asking to show up so we could connect more with our children. I'm homeschooling. It's been hot and cold. I'm doing my best, but it's given me a new relationship with my son, okay, who is now seven, seven year cycle. He hit a seven year cycle this year. All right, so let me see if I have time for one more. Um, we got started super late. Um, Yeah, one thing she wants me to focus on, and we really talked about this a lot in Southampton, is, you know, I've said a lot, practice, prepare, play, look at yourself. I haven't really mentioned anyone around you that you love and, and take care of. And one of the, the biggest principles of my work is that, you know, when you take your eyes off of your own paper and make your life about rescuing and enlightening and waking someone else up, you deprive yourself of moving into a space of mastery and only someone in mastery can influence anyone around them, honestly. I mean, you can influ influence from a negative place, but let's just look at this through the eyes of quantum physics. Whatever you look at gets an expanse, right? So whatever I put back comes, whatever I put out comes back. So if I am like terrified of my mother's well-being or my father's well-being, or I'm upset with my daughter, or so and so and so. And the stories can all be pulled from the first seven year cycles why we're having this happen. Or we're really upset that they're not more aware, or we're more upset that they're not taking care of themselves, or we're, we're broken hearted that they don't, you know, they're not living up to their potential. This is usually what I hear every single day. Then by you looking at them through the eyes of fear and lack and judgment, and then trying to apply energy to their awakening, you're actually self-abusing, okay? Now, this is something we really teach a lot of, and I only have a few minutes, but I want to kind of like this, leave this here. When I give myself away to help someone who's not ready to be helped or can't hear me, 
then I am not only taking the opportunity away from the, for them to hit their rock bottom so that they can turn to the mirror of themselves to look at their choices, but I'm also depriving myself of my life force energy that I could use to fully expand. Now, I'm not saying don't help people because I do it every single day, but I do it from a very full overflowing cup, not an empty cup. I'm not making my life's journey about making my partner happy so that I can be happy. I'm not making my life's journey about me making my partner understand my journey so that he'll let me do my journey, right? And this is obviously a little tiny thing. I'm actually coming out in October. We're gonna do a two day workshop in Southampton and I'm only going to take you guys through the clearing of these first seven years in two days. Yes, we can do it, we're awesome. And you'll notice that a lot of the rescuing that you're doing right now and the worrying and the judging and the judging of the judging and the contemplating and the scarcity and lack that you have for the people, places, and things behind you are only robbing you of your healing. And when you can heal, your light gets very expansive. So the analogy I like to use is when your light is flickering because it's being and the light flickers because the energy sources is not fluid, right? That's when the light flickers is when the energy source is not fluid. So the connection isn't strong to the light, it will flicker, okay? So if my connection from the ground to the cosmos isn't strong, my light will flicker. Well, what does a flickering light attract? Bugs, right? Bugs, people who wanna feed off me, people who need me, right? That could be your children. That could be your spouse. And it's because your light bulb is flickering because your connection is sketchy. So my recommendation is, and this is easier said than done. Trust me. I know I've done it. I came from a very narcissistic family is to stop feeding the bugs, right? Turn off the light, go within, right? Fix what needs mending. Stop being there for everyone who's not there for you. Right. Start practicing your the idea of looking at your own paper. What do I need? What do I want? What do I deserve? And I know a lot of you are carrying that lovely program of unworthiness. It's a human condition, but it doesn't need to be there because you're all worthy. If you're on the planet, you're here to self-realize. You're here as a very specific puzzle piece that only fits into the whole when you are being yourself, when you're being authentic. Okay. So going within, turning that light off, and then that's meditation, bringing the light in, and then turning yourself on like the sun, because the sun can illuminate everything, help everyone, gives me 12 hours of unlimited energy to talk, really, and I'm not depleted by who I help, and I help my children, and I help them, but I do not help them from a place of victim rescuing. I help them from a place of of um, connection, respect, honor, and allowing. There's a lot of conscious parenting at the basis of my work because honestly, at the end of the day, there's a lot of unhealed grown-up children running around raising children, and that's why we got into the situation that we're in and all have been sent to our rooms, okay? That is all the time I have today, but I just wanted to celebrate Jackie and just commend her on an amazing group. It, this is not an easy process, what we do, what she does. Um, facilitating this week after week and holding space for everybody to come through and give them a forum and a place to participate who they are and choose to be. So celebrate you, Jackie. Celebrate this group. Celebrate each other. Look for the positives and the negatives. Look for the potential and the lack. Look for the gratitude right now within yourself and others. Let go of other people's journeys and tap into your own. Find your life force energy and share that once it expands with the whole world in the way that you uniquely, authentically want to share love. All right. Thank you guys so much for, for joining me. And sorry we couldn't get it the way that we wanted it, but we still showed up and we will always show up. And I will keep you posted if I get anything new, but I will tell you we're right on time and everything is always divine. We'll see you soon.